Welcome back. It's time to open up tonight's unsolved case file. And this is a story that goes back uh, to 2009 when a young mom disappeared. You're going to recognize the name because this was a national story. Susan Powell went missing out of Utah. We have some uh, pictures of her. So you, to remind you uh, who she is, there she is with her two uh, boys. Um, wonderful mom, wonderful kids. Should be living a wonderful life right now. But she went missing. And all suspicion went on her husband because... At the time she went missing, he had this story about taking the boys camping in the middle of a blizzard. It was, it was outrageous. It was ridiculous. Um, but there was never enough evidence gathered against him. And then eventually, in, in 2012, an absolute, a, another horrific tragedy upon tragedy, this selfish coward um, took his own life, but then took the lives of the two boys. And meanwhile, Susan has never been found. And, and this, this is just such a sad, sad story. Um, but we do have an update. Uh, KSTU, our great affiliate in Salt Lake City, Utah, uh, Spencer Joseph is the reporter, um, talking about the latest in the search for Susan Powell. <laughs> This is what we live for. In the nearly unreachable boundaries of the West Desert of Utah. About 30 feet of thick, thick dirt. We're going on day nine, I think, out here. A team led by Dave Sparks is searching for the final resting place of Susan Cox Powell. I was very fascinated with the idea of maybe helping find Susan. I've kind of just been following along ever since, and then we got a tip that there's a chance she's out here. They're armed with the best equipment. We pride ourselves on being able to extract, recover, or rescue items, people, whatever it is that nobody else has ever been able to get to. But on the ninth day of digging, there was a special visitor who's looking for any sign of Susan. Is this theirs or is it something? I, I wish there was more. Uh, I'm, I'm glad for what they've got and I'm, I want them to get back down and bring out more stuff. This is Chuck Cox, Susan's father. It wasn't going to get searched any other way. And I'd just be glad to find out, is she here, is she not, who is here? He's been very invested in this process, uh, just like we are. And After 12 years, he's never given up looking. The likelihood uh, is pretty low that we're going to find something. But on the other hand, she's still out there somewhere. But this has not been an easy process. We've seen the good, bad, and the ugly. And this mine was ugly. Uh, the fact that this mine had been perfectly intact for 100 years or so back in November 2009 and then in January of 2010 the mine had been burnt and collapsed. This seems to fit everything we would want and I'm disappointed it was not checked earlier. And they have found some evidence. Bones, we're finding trash, we found a pair of pants that appears to be either a small man or a woman's pair of pants. We found other articles of clothing, found a little piece of tree wrap material, which according to the podcast about Josh Powell, there was an opportunity where he may have gone out and bought this exact same material. All of which will be given to her father and then analyzed. But this dig is also about a bigger idea. We wanted to raise awareness of this whole case, make sure that people don't forget about what happened to Susan. I never knew Susan, um, but I feel connected to her in ways that I can't explain. And as bucket after bucket is brought up and searched, for Chuck Cox, it's one step closer to finding his daughter and finding peace. It's it's a blessing, and, and I'm just so thankful that they, they're doing it, and I'm just grateful that people are still looking for Susan. Amazing work being done there. Absolutely amazing work. But you, you heard why they were there. They received a tip. Okay, tips are still coming in. If you have information, please call or email the West Valley City Police. Phone number is on the screen, 801-965-7020. 801-965-7020. Also, cold case tips at wcvpd.com. Still with us tonight, retired director of the San Diego Police Department Crime Lab, Jen Shen, and professor of forensics at Jacksonville State University, 
Forensic media analyst Joseph Scott Morgan has a great podcast, Body Bags, as well. I think we just lost him for a moment. And joining us now is a special guest, joining us from uh, Puyallup, Up, uh, Washington, Susan Powell's father, Chuck, is with us. Chuck, uh, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate you joining us tonight. Um, how are you holding up? Uh, we're, we're waiting anxiously to, to find out what forensics has to say about the, the things we discovered in the mine. It's amazing. I, I haven't talked to you in over a, a decade. Um, I'm so glad that there are still people providing tips. I'm so glad that there are people that are still invested in all this. It's absolutely amazing. Um, give us a little more information about um, what you learned and where the tip came from and, and what led them to that area. Well, it uh, came through Dave Sparks, friends of his, and he took it upon himself to just uh, go after it, and he's going to find out what's at the bottom of the mine. So I, I know what he knows. I was unaware of anyone uh, knowing the status of this mine, and I knew it had been attempted to be searched uh, later on in the spring of 2010. But it, at that time, to my knowledge, it had already been... Uh, destroyed and uh, essentially closed, uh, collapsed. So that would explain explain why uh, no one actually went down in it. And it was such a you can tell by what Dave had to go through, and his crew. Uh, there was nobody except for somebody like Dave with with the resources and the will and the, the his team that were going to be able to search that mine. So uh, it was one of a great interest just because its location. And, uh, but nobody was going to look down that mine. So I'm just grateful he did that. Absolutely. And give us a little more information about where, where that location is versus where uh, Susan lives and, and any sort of nexus or connection there. Well, we, we left uh, from just a few blocks away from where Susan lived and uh, left in, in the morning about nine o'clock and we got in about 1130 or so. Uh, driving out there, and uh, that's when we had people knowing where we were going. But it's it's uh, about uh, 85 miles or so from where she lived, and uh, pretty rough area. But the interesting thing is, it's only about 30 miles from Simpson Springs, which is where Josh claimed that he went camping with the boys that Sunday night, Monday morning. That makes some sense. I want to bring Jennifer Shen into the uh, conversation, director, uh, retired director of the Crime Lab down in San Diego. Jen, um, how about some of these items that were recovered? Uh, what are your thoughts, your hopes about what, what will be able to be done with them? Well, first of all, kudos to the people who are out there doing this. It's really, really hard work. There's um, nothing really more difficult than doing this kind of excavation and this kind of forensic recovery because you're looking for small pieces that are in the dirt and brush um, that may not be very visible. Uh, it's just very tedious and, and painstaking. But on the good news front, the, there's so much that can be done with forensics. Anything they find that belonged to her or was part of her clothing or hair or any part of her body can be looked at for DNA even this long later. So if there's anything down there that they find that belongs to belongs to her, they will be able to make that connection. And so that's very exciting. But it's it's just a, a tremendous amount of work. And so, so, so happy for you that they're doing it. Chuck, can you remind us what exactly was re recovered from the site? Uh, there were three rib bones and uh, four vertebrae. And uh, I, I, we think a scapula or something up in this area. And uh, then the, the pants and there were some shirt uh, material and uh, various cloth. It's hard to say what it was, but it kind of looked like possibly shirt, bits of shirt material that they found. And uh, so we have all that uh, taken to a forensic lab. Joseph Scott Morgan back with us uh, via phone. I know you got some weather issues uh, in Alabama tonight. Uh, Joseph, your, your thoughts about some of the recoveries that were made here and uh, being able to do something to perhaps provide an answer here? Yeah, uh, first off, uh, uh, thanks for letting me join you. I, I, my, I'm very happy that uh, this group of individuals have taken the initiative to do this. Now that we actually have 
uh, would appear to be remains of some kind that have been found at the scene. I'm hoping uh, that the uh, state crime lab uh, and state medical examiner's office will become equally as excited and pour their resources into this because as great as it is to have volunteers doing this, I, I want to see them put the full force of their forensic knowledge into the recovery. You need to have a forensic anthropologist out there, maybe a whole team of them that could spend time excavating this area very precisely, looking for things that other people might not see that they can see because they're trained forensically and make sure that the recovery is very thorough, that nothing is missed. Because, you know, over this period of time, bones can fragment and they might look like rocks to other people. I've been on scenes where that has happened and it's not, it's not a rock. It's not a piece of wood. It's actually a bone. So I'm hoping that the authorities will become as equally invested. And I'm so very happy for the family though that this is occurring. Absolutely. So Chuck, all these years later, um, explain to us what this means to you and your family. Well, first, uh, it's just a big question. Are these human remains? Are, have we found her? Uh, I'm very encouraged with the fact that we have a, a eyewitness can point, pinpoint when the the map uh, when, when the mine was collapsed. So we're putting like the end of November to uh, January. So that kind of narrows a lot of things. And uh, now, as he was suggesting, I think the place, the place needs another look through uh, the material that they pulled out. And thanks to the um, Diesel Brothers team and uh, Dave Sparks, uh, they brought most of that material to the top. Now they didn't screen it, there was no cadaver dog to help them or anything like that, but I think a, a good team out there might find a, a, a lot more in, uh, parts than we were able to. We just managed to get you know the few parts that we have, but I do, I'm very hopeful that the DNA uh, testing would will uh, prove that it, it was Susan. Again, I keep saying how amazing this is, and, 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 and we're hoping and praying that you get the answer um, that you've been looking for and you get that opportunity. Chuck Cox, uh, very nice to see you again after all these years, and uh, the best always to you and your family. You've been through so much. Thank you very much. Jen Shen, uh, Joseph Scott Morgan, your expertise, your time is so valuable. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Still ahead.